the most common time that you can help somebody is when they're down. And there are a lot of people that are down because they're at the, their end roads and they don't know where to turn. That when people come in to any of our branch locations, that you outreach your arms and you help them and you see what their problems are. I think that's what we brought to this industry. I think that's what we brought to this community, that we um, try to outreach to the people that need us the most and we're here to help serve them. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing. Um, this past uh, week, uh, one of our dedicated employees, Katie McPhee, uh, who was on our nursing staff uh, at Knox Trail uh, passed away. I'd like us to remember her and respect her with a moment of silence. Thank you. We have a somewhat short agenda tonight, and I'm going to take uh, uh, these uh, articles uh, out of order, and we'll do the uh, first uh, item as the last one. We'll get the other uh, work out of the way first. Uh, so we'll start with the budget transfers. Uh, Dr. Malvey? Well, uh, as, as we go each week now, uh, we can look a little closer to uh, cl the close of the school year. So uh, Julie came forward to me, and really what the catalyst was, uh, we were running out of fuel. And I don't know about you, but our schedule said that the springtime was supposed to be here, but we still had some cold days. So uh, we had to go forward and uh, get some more fuel, and that were uh, really was the start of possibility of making some transfers. But as Julie started to look, uh, she felt it would be a good time to clean up a lot of the accounts, and I'll let her speak to the detail, details of that. But more importantly, uh, we would also like to be able to recover uh, money from uh, various accounts uh, to continue on our um, travel to restore our computer system, technology system. And then also, if you recall, we had a contingency amount in the budget that the commissioner uh, established an additional $120,000 for specific items. We drew down some of that earlier in the year, but now we're in a position to charge off legitimate expenses to that um, account uh, based on what was proposed to the commissioner um, uh, at the beginning of this budget uh, year. And then also, uh, Julie believes that we could address some of the building maintenance issues at the high school. In particular, um, we've had some leaking uh, at the roof and uh, also a number of doors that are in more than uh, disrepair. So she believes that we can address some of that. But the particulars, Julie, if you could comment. Okay. Um, the first page is just clean up items like we usually have to clean up for some substitutes. and to clean up in transportation and in athletics to cover transportation, just taking money from some of their supply lines to cover the additional costs of transportation for athletics. Um, the rest are just cleaning up due to a transfer of staff and regular transfers. On the second page is the transfer to basically realign all of the fac facilities budgets to allow us for the additional money we need for heating the buildings, as well as the additional money for some of the building maintenance, particularly at the high school, like Dr. Helby said, the roof and some of the doors. We have some money from unfilled custodial salaries, um, some money from custodial supply savings. We've had um, much lower water and sewer bills this year, so there's savings there, as well as a little bit in telephones and less HVAC repairs, so moving that money into the building maintenance instead of the HVAC. And then the next page, Using up the remainder of the contingency that originally started at 120, we still have 82,000 left there um, to move that money into um, <coughs> the originally identified in the 700,000 of liabilities that have actually happened. Um, issues with the Lake Street elevator, 
um, legal f bills and all of those things that were originally listed. So taking that, that will be the end of the contingency money. And then moving $100,000 to purchase additional computers from areas that we have savings at this point of the year and we don't anticipate that we'll need for between now and the end of the year. Um, we've had less, um, the financial overseer is coming in less than I had originally forecasted. Um, we've had some savings in some contracted services as well as some unspent money in classroom supplies. Does anyone have any specific questions I can answer? Uh, Dr. Melvin, do you want to comment on that? If not, I'll take any questions. No, no, I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, again, I, I go back to uh, my commentary throughout the year that uh, come the fourth quarter, if we're in a um, decent financial position, this is standard practice, if you will, so I would recommend approval. Uh, are there any questions for any board members? Uh, Mr. Nodquist. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Julie, uh, this year charge for the IRS penalty, is that the figure, $4,851? Yes, that was the penalty that we had to pay from the prior year. We had put an appeal for it and we were denied, so we had to pay that penalty. I believe in what you're saying, but it's pretty sad that the Internal Revenue got to fine us for not having an, an unexpected elevator at Lake Street School. I'd like to have this in the public uh, out there. Oh. Just to clarify, the 4,851 was for an IRS penalty. The $14,000 was for the Lake Street elevator penalty. Yeah, I understand that, but the 4,851, as a taxpayer, I, I just say, boy, they're getting pretty low to go after school it charges for we don't have an unexpected elevator. I mean, I think that's pretty low. And my second question is, uh, on the $100,000 transfer, is this gonna be off the figure that we set at the town meeting of uh, $635,000 for the computers? No, we've identified over $1.1 million worth of expenses that we actually need. So this will just reduce that, but we still need the 632. So just to make it more palatable, uh, it's said and done, but I, I just said, well, why wouldn't take the 100,000 off the bill to make the people be more palatable to accept it instead of adding it at the other end? I just find that not good, uh, not good, uh, good job. I'm not blaming you or Dr. Malvey, but as a taxpayer, 635,000, if we knocked off 100,000, I think it would go a long way, but that's to be seen, thank you. Uh, Dr. Malvey, do you want to address that? Or? Well, I can understand the reasoning of it, but as Julie said, we're really at, <clears throat> excuse me, $1.2 million that we had put down on the menu. And uh, even with the discussions going up to the recent town meeting at Spencer, uh, we were anticipating that we still would uh, respectfully request the $632,000 which came forward on the article and any adjustments um, would be made on the balance of that, if you will, on the, um, the other side of uh, going to 1.2 million because the 632 is really the tip of the iceberg for us. We really need to uh, have that to restore a level playing field. Um, and I hope it prevails at East Brookfield and eventually uh, if it's to be voted upon in Spencer, uh, otherwise we're going to be between a rock and a hard place. So I understand the reasoning for it, but we'd only be scraping right away to try to patch whatever additional amount might be reduced. Thank you. Uh, in that light, in regards to, to that borrowing item, just to uh, clear up any further confusion about the financing of the computers, I thought we had made it quite clear at the uh, Spencer Town meeting, but for the benefit <coughs> of everyone else, the Spencer East Brookfield Regional School District will borrow the money themselves if approved by the voters. We are not asking the town of Spencer or the town of East Brookfield to borrow the money for us. The Regional School District, if approved at the ballot box by the voters, will go out and borrow the money for the purchase of the uh, computers. So I hope that clears up any further misunderstandings about who's going to pay and how it's going to be paid and when it's going to be done. It's going to be done by the school district. We are the body that will do the, the uh, borrowing for that article. Anybody have any further questions in regards to the transfers? Seeing none, is there a motion? Motion accept, Mr. Chairman. A motion made by Mr. Nodquist. Is there a second? Second. 
Seconded by, who was it? Vinnie. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, so voted. Uh, the next issue is retiree insurance. Uh, Dr. Melby. Well, uh, as you know, we've been uh, holding the uh, insurance meetings with the information that's come out and the uh, sign up for the uh, retirees now that the committee has acted to move off the GIC plan to the district plan. And uh, there's another piece that needs to, a piece of business that needs to be tended to, and that is with respect to the, uh, correct me, Julie, <laughs> um, with respect to the Medicare. Uh, retirees uh, that are not on GIC, but um, their arrangement was a little bit differently and in order to go forward so that there's uh, equivalency across the board, the committee needs to take a vote to move those individuals to the, um, the rate of 75-25, that is the employer pays 75% of the premium and the employee pays 25% of the premium. Um, so that needs to be voted upon uh, by the committee, subject to any requirements that need to be taken care of with respect to Chapter 150E, which is the uh, collective bargaining statute. Uh, this information was provided to us uh, by legal counsel, and uh, it requires a vote uh, by the school committee. Thank you, Dr. Malby. <clears throat> any questions for any board members? If not, is there a motion? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Cloutier. I make a motion that all non-teacher retirees who are Medicare eligible shall contribute 25% of their health care insurance premiums effective July 1st, 2014, subject to any requirements of Chapter 150E. Is there a second to that motion? Second, Mr. Chairman. Seconded by Mr. Notch. Was any further discussion? I need to recuse myself from this vote. My mom's a retired teacher. Okay. Any other comments or discussion in regards to the motion? Uh, Martha? Non-teacher retirees. Yes. M Medicare non-teacher retirees. Correct. And for the uh, intent for the board, what it does is bring everyone in compliance now with the 75-25 split. Right. Okay. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And opposed? So voted. I'm sorry? No. Okay, uh, one. Mr. Cody. Okay, at this point, uh, we'll now go to the first item on the agenda, which is discussion on the superintendent search uh, process. At the last school committee meeting, the board voted uh, uh, to have the chair explore options that were available to us in going forward uh, with the superintendent search uh, process. Uh, I've s spoken with uh, Glenn Kucher from Mass Association of School Committees, and uh, he brought me up to date as to what they've done in the past and what a lot of the dis districts are now doing at this time. Uh, this may be contrary to what some people think, but uh, he did express to me today that the pool is very shallow uh, at this time and that um, it's, it's not uh, a great time uh, to be going out. Uh, having said that, um, he thought from his viewpoint that the board had two options, that um, we could go the, the typical route of appointing a large committee comprised of people from throughout the community uh, and citizens, uh, uh, employees, and so forth. And if we went that route, that we probably would be looking at some time around late fall to early winter before we would be completed and be to the interview process. Uh, the other option is to do a, a, a more streamlined version uh, where they would be able to assist us. Uh, they did the advertising and the postings and all that stuff the last time and they have a lot of that information still available to them. And they could go out and assist us and do that and then they could compile uh, a, a group of people that uh, w they would determine that would be qualified that could come back to the board and then this board could do the screening process themselves in executive session to whittle it down to whatever number the board wanted to have for final uh, interviews. So I, I guess those are the two options uh, that we have is uh, what is the pleasure of the board 
whether we want to go to a streamlined version where we can anticipate having somebody in here by perhaps late July or early August, uh, mid-August, or do you want to go the typical long-term approach, which will bring us into late fall or early winter? Uh, comments, uh, suggestions? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Cludio. I'm certainly in favor of you know, taking a streamlined approach to this. I'm also looking to, for the, this board to interview and, and hire that next superintendent. I think it's pretty important that we take this challenge on ourselves. We're the folks that this person has to work for. We certainly have ideas of how we want to see things done. I think it's incumbent upon us to take the bull by the horns and hire this person from the get-go. I think that uh, we ought to do as much of this ourselves as possible. Uh, at the end of the day, whether we have a committee from towns folks, educators, and alike, or, and, and it's been done both ways in this district over the years, as you well know, uh, or we do it ourselves. Um, you know, we, you can only do as good a job as the time and effort that you want to put into it. And uh, I'm willing to put as many hours as we have to so that we get the right person to be our next uh, permanent superintendent. So okay. that's my thoughts. Anyone else with any comments? Yeah, I just, Josh. The second option, I, first, I'm not going to be here, so, I mean, you guys do whatever you want, but we had the MASC do the streamlined version last time, and it didn't work out so, so hot. So uh, I, uh, I might suggest that we just not involve them at all, and we do this ourselves, or you do this yourselves, and you involve as much of the community as you can so there's at least a little bit of support from the community for this because there's no support from the community right now. Um, but I, I, think, I think if, we do, if you do this yourselves and you, you have, a, have a big committee, you involve as many people as you can, I, I also I, I don't really agree with the next winter thing. I, I, we've, in the three years I've been here, we've had four superintendents. Um, and uh, they've all been interims. I think we're, we know what we don't want. We've gotten pretty good at figuring out what we don't want. So I think we can probably get this done a little bit faster than that, especially if you're willing to work on it as long as you have to. Um, but I would definitely keep the MASC out of this. And uh, do it yourselves. Thank you, Josh. Any other comments? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Nodquist. I just want to say, uh, as a senior member, uh, Mr. King and myself, uh, we've been down this road both ways. Uh, as far as I know, this is the third superintendent. I've been here since we hired. I don't know what the fourth one is. But with that being said, uh, we're going to have to pick the superintendent at the end of the day, the school committee. And, and I think that we should be doing the interviewing and, and come together and, and pick the right candidate. He's going to work with us, and and and, and we're going to work with him. Uh, I've seen it done where we hire principals, we hire a lot of people with search committees, and it's a long drawn out affair. And at the end of the day, the school committee picks not with the principal, so to say, but the school committee picks the, the high echelon in the blue house, so to say. And uh, we have we don't have a time frame. We got. The rest of the, you know, I mean, I mean, the rest of the world. But uh, I like to have somebody on board. Uh, I don't know how long Dr. Melby's going to stay, but I like to have somebody on board who's going to try to uh, help Dr. Melby uh, get this thing going. It's a bigger job. I don't know in my dreams who would want to take this job, but I'm sure there's somebody out there who wants to do it and and have to welcome me aboard to to apply. Uh, we have serious problems, and it's not going to go away. We're a new superintendent, so uh, I think that's what we got to do. And I support Mr. Cludia's motion of of, uh, of going forward with the short end of the stick and, and, and having somebody on board as soon as possible. Thank you, Kurt. Anyone else uh, have any comments? Uh, I've been involved in similar processes like this on the town side uh, many times, and uh, <laughs> We've done them both by ourselves, and we've done them by uh, employee and professional search firms. And uh, it really, we've had success and failures both ways. I, I think one of the problems is there's this misnomer that 
if you go out and you hire an organization or a headhunting firm to help you, that you just simply turn the reins over to them and you expect them to bring you uh, 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 the best candidate and a guy that's going to come in and do a superb job. And I think a lot of times what happens is committees kind of drop the ball then and they say, well, we hired this firm, we're having them do the search process, they'll send us the best qualified person and all we got to do is make a decision and take a vote out of the three finals they send us. And nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, I, I think when you hire these firms to come and help you, you still as a committee have to do your due diligence. You still have to vet these people. You still have to talk to people in the industry. You still have to make site visits. You still have a job to do as a member of the board to do the final hiring. And uh, I would not support or be in favor of just hiring, <coughs> for instance, the uh, Mass School Committee Associations and completely turning the reins over to them and say, send us the top three candidates that apply. Uh, we're looking for someone to do the advertising for us, put their <coughs> promotional material out there, uh, take the first look and eliminate those people that don't even come close to being qualified, and then send us the pool of candidates after that. And then it would be the intention, my intention anyways, as one member of the board, to then tap uh, Dr. Malvey's uh, uh, years of experience and expertise in helping us to screen whatever that pool of candidates is that's sent to us. So then we could get down to a final number, whatever that number is, three, five, whatever the board decided it was, and then go forward with public interviews where everybody would be interviewed as finalists in a public setting. And then we would take that under advisement for three or four days so that members of the community from both towns would have their opportunity to uh, weigh in and then make a decision. And uh, I, I think if we do something like that, uh, it keeps us involved in the process but it also allows us to be able to make sure that the process doesn't get totally out of hand and stays on some constructive uh, time frame. And Dr. Malvey has indicated that he's more than willing to help us in any capacity that uh, the board wishes to, uh, to have his help. And uh, I think we would be uh, um, foolish of us at this point uh, not to take advantage of what he could do for us. I think there's something to be said to have someone involved in the process aiding us to go through this selection that has been here for the past year or so, recognizes the problems, knows what has been taken care of and what hasn't, and uh, where the line, landmines uh, still lay, so to speak. Uh, so uh, I, I would support what Mr. Cloutier is uh, suggesting as well, and I, I think that uh, we can make this a viable process. And uh, uh, look, we're going to be responsible for this whether we have a 25-member committee and stretch it out for the next five months or we get this done in a streamlined version in a couple months. There's going to be criticism no matter which way we go here. And uh, we're big boys and girls, and it's going to be up to us to shoulder that if that's the route that the board decides that they want to go. Uh, are there any other comments? Or Dr. Malby, do you have any comment that you'd like to make in regards to? Uh, I, I think just generally that, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Without question, <clears throat> the uh, recruitment uh, and hiring of a school superintendent is a uh, key, key responsibility of a school committee. And certainly for a school community, and I, I put that in the broader context, um, it is critical that you find a candidate that is a reasonably good match for the respective communities. Easier said than done. You're correct, uh, Mr. Hayes, with respect to the candidate pool. Uh, for the past 10 years, the numbers have been diminishing in the superintendent ranks uh, for a lot of reasons that I won't go into. But even with that, I don't want people to get discouraged. I have been involved in this process as an interim superintendent. This is my seventh interim superintendency, and each one I've either assisted directly um, as an advisor or indirectly to guide uh, my respective school committees, and they all have ended up with the superintendent, some stronger than other candidates, but certainly a candidate that they were comfortable with in the end, and I believe that will happen here. As you go forward, you will uh, see candidates that, that we kind of put into three categories. One is the seasoned superintendent that may be looking for their last 
uh, superintendency, if you will, uh, for a good number of years, but probably then moving on to retirement or other avenues in, in the professional industry. The second category would be folks that are looking to make a lateral move, and, and the reality of that is there could be issues that a superintendent is not getting along in another district, or just the superintendent has fulfilled his or her responsibilities in that district and you need a breath of fresh air and move on. And the last category is uh, individuals that are moving up in their career. Folks that have had the proper training, they've, they've uh, kind of put in their time, if you will, whether that be uh, in direct um, central office experience, or certainly district-wide experience, and then a number of candidates uh, recently are coming from the uh, principal ranks. Uh, so I don't want people to get discouraged. Um, in, in that last category, there are a number of uh, people that are moving on in their career and they're ready to make the move. They may not have all the experience that you may be looking for, but they will have the skill set to be able to operate in a highly, highly technology-charged area this day and age in public education. Along with that comes all the requirements that the State Department of Education and the federal government are putting onto school districts. Usually that younger set of candidate coming forward are well versed in the uh, research and the education jargon and the wherewithal of how to pursue grants and some of the minutia that we have to go through, uh, jumping through hoops in order to get uh, to the end of the task, if you will, given what's in front of us. So I do think that you'll have a, a uh, worthwhile group of looking uh, at and, and reviewing. Now, with respect to the $64,000 question, uh, is it better to go with a, a, a search firm and or a large group uh, doing some of the uh, screening or doing it on your own? I can tell you from my experience, I've been in communities where they've done it both ways. There's no secret to it. I'm sure no matter what you choose, uh, you will do your due diligence and you'll end up with a candidate that uh, you'll be comfortable with. Ultimately, it is your, your primary responsibility to hire a superintendent, but to think that you need it to go uh, one way or another with respect to the, the longer process of a search and a committee or uh, streamline it, uh, you're gonna be successful. I have seen it. So take that for what it's worth, but I have seen it that it works well both ways. And the end result of that is I've not seen that superintendent go in, be more successful or less successful because one of the processes was used. Ultimately, it ends up, is there a good working relationship with that individual, with the school committee and with the communities? And the last thing I'll mention with it, uh, I would encourage um, all of us uh, going through the process, um, be sure that it's a candidate that uh, is going to be comfortable either living or working in this neck of the woods, if you will. Uh, as a young man coming out of the Boston area many, many, many years ago, one of the questions that was asked of me, uh, not that Boston has it right, but coming out of that area, are you going to be able to make it? And I, I've been in the area for 35 years. Uh, the question that was asked, are you going to be able to make it from that type of environment, Mr. Malvey, coming into a more countrified um, arena, if you will? We do things a little bit differently. And I can recall, once I got the position, the different was how to get the cow off the playground. <laughs> and I was a city boy, and, and so I did, that was di difficult. But my point is that you got to be able to have someone that's going to live breathe, be visible, um, be aware of how we all tick out in this neck of the woods and going to be comfortable with that. You know, put down some of the stripes, be able to talk the lingo. Yes, there are times where we have to talk education east, if you will, but there are other times and you'll be more successful of talking to people straight on. So I would just put that as kind of a bee in your bonnet, but I think you'll be successful either way you go. Thank you, Dr. Melby. Any other comments uh, from any members? Uh, uh, if not, th there is a copy of a brochure that uh, was done uh, by the Mass uh, School Committee Association 
the last time around, um, uh, if it ends up being the pleasure of the board to go that route, uh, it's a, a matter of updating uh, some information and stuff and uh, uh, having uh, Mr. Kucher and his group come out and meet with us uh, so that we can all speak with the organization, ask any questions that we want, and then we as a board will need to, uh, to finalize some very clear ground rules as to what we want them to do and what we would expect out of them and stuff. You know, so. Mr. Chairman, if I might. Yes. I, I'd kind of like to understand if this is feasible. I know you've talked with uh, Mr. Kucher, so uh, if, if we hire his organization to provide, to do the uh, publicity, the marketing, the recruitment, receiving the applications, and, uh, and then initial screening against a set of criteria that we've set up, and then he provides those applications to us. Let's just assume for a second 20 applications <coughs> provided to us. Am I correct in reading the law, and, I, and I'm not a lawyer, but I, I've, I've read through it, that we can then, as a board, review those 20 or so applications in executive session so that the people, the 20 candidates that have applied have no fear of their names being released publicly at that point. <coughs> After that review, we then can, and whether it's one meeting, two meetings, three meetings, whatever it takes, we can then narrow that down to a list of, say, three, five, whatever we decide. Again, it would be the criteria this board sets up, and then have public interviews for those finalists. So that's my question. Is that accurate? That's my understanding in my discussions uh, with uh, Mr. Kucher. Um, he has said that uh, we can do it as a full board uh, and do it in an executive session and whittle it down to that group that we want to uh, pick to interview. And then at that point, it would have to be a public uh, interview uh, process. But so with that said, I, I'm in favor of that process. And I'm in favor of this board doing that. And, and the reason I support that is because I certainly understand that there are going to be candidates that are going to throw their names out there and not want their you know, current employers to know that they're out there searching for another job. Right. Well, potentially that could be the case. Some may not care, but uh, I certainly wouldn't want the process to be skewed and find out that, oh no, all this has to be done publicly because then I think that takes the pool of the potential 20 down to the potential five right out of the gate. Right. Uh, so as long as we can do it that way that I've just described, I certainly, like I said before, I support this. I think this is our job. I think it's incumbent upon us to take the time and energy and effort that it takes to hire our next superintendent, whoever that might be. And I'm certainly not afraid to hire somebody who's a tenured superintendent or a, or, or a relatively new superintendent. I want to hire the best possible superintendent for the district which we can afford. Yeah. I want to hire somebody that's willing to grow for the district. I'd like to see somebody stay here longer than a few years. So that would be my intention and certainly uh, where I'd be coming from, the angle that I'd be coming from. And uh, you know, everyone has heard me talk at previous meetings. I'm not afraid of change. I'm not afraid of new ideas. I'm not afraid of new superintendents uh, or, or any other professional uh, positions for that matter. Uh, new people bring new ideas, so I'm, I'm open to that. And although I, I do agree with Dr. Malby's comments, we probably have a, uh, a fairly significant set of challenges that face this district. Uh, I think that the right person with the right skill set, regardless if they've been a superintendent for 20 years, for 10 years, or this is their first appointment, if they the right, have the right skill set, they can work through it. Yep. Just my thoughts. Yeah. I agree with everything that uh, you said, Mr. Cloutier. And I think from my standpoint, I think this is too important to have a subcommittee and just so many members of the board. I think all seven members of the board ought to uh, be active in this process, and we should do this as a full committee uh, so that everybody can weigh in and have their, their say and not have uh, a, a group to be interviewed brought back to you that you haven't had the opportunity to have some input in as to who that's going to be, you know. Dr. Malby, do you have any, um, in our discussion about how we're going to do this, do you see any uh, pitfalls of, uh, of doing it this way and, and going into um, having the board just take that batch of applications to send back to us uh, after they uh, 
put out all the uh, right. recruiting. <clears throat> Certainly not from a legal standpoint. Right. Uh, it's more the flavor of uh, how the board uh, chooses to work and, and the flavor of the communities if they wanted to be involved. I think your comment with respect to as you get to that process, then certainly it can be uh, opened uh, up with the board uh, maintaining control of it. But I have seen it where candidates have been um, interviewed and then there's also a public uh, portion that they can be interviewed or questions coming from the public too. So from a purely technical <clears throat> legal standpoint, I don't. It's just a matter of what's going to fit best for the respective communities. Yeah. I can't make that judgment for these two communities. And that's something as one member that I would have no objections to. We, we certainly as a board will publicly interview all these people and uh, we very, may very well have some discussion about that as to whether we want to have some segment of that interview process with questions uh, you know, from, uh, uh, from both communities uh, in a limited time frame uh, type setting, but that's something we could discuss as we go along. But, uh, all right, well, having said that, if no one else has any other input and stuff, is there a motion uh, to set the course that we're going to follow, and then the, the chair will start that in motion? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Nikos, yeah. I'll make a motion that, that we enter into, into negotiations or, or concur with uh, Glenn Kuchner on, uh, on search for superintendent. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second, any further discussion? I, I, I yeah. I'm still I, do we know how much they're going to charge us for this first? And second of all, um, what exactly are they going to do? Because if, I mean, last time it was $10,000, and they, they did the, you know, the first and second cut, whatever it was, got it down to three candidates. We're looking at a smaller pool this time and you guys just said that you want to look at all 20 candidates if we're lucky enough to get 20 candidates. Um, so are we paying them 10 grand for advertising? What, what exactly is, what, what's the purpose and is it worth the $10,000 that we're going to spend to bring them into this? Yeah. This is my question. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not $10,000 and uh, the board is just making this decision tonight. So I think the next step will be we'll have Mr. Kucha come out here uh, from the association and we'll have discussion amongst board members and we'll decide what role we want them to play and he'll give us a cost factor that will be associated with that. But um, if he was doing the whole process, um, he had uh, estimated that we were talking somewhere around 7,000 to 7,500, but we're not interested. It doesn't sound like uh, from the board standpoint. Uh, so basically this motion is just to negotiate with them. It's to have them come out and the board is going, to ha is going to discuss with them. We'll have some discussion as to what role we want them to play and they'll put a dollar figure on it. Right. Then we'll decide you, you whether. Can have a time frame for this too because that's going to push us back. Well, we have our next meeting uh, on the 20th and that is going to be a very short meeting. Uh, it will simply be a, a reorganization, setting the calendar. And, um, and then uh, if, if uh, Mr. Cooch can be here that night, we can start. I was going to say it might be good to have him here for that there and then we'll be going to executive session uh, uh, to be updated by council for all the new members as to where we, we sit with everything. If I may, Mr. Chairman, I can yes. add some light on that. Having worked with MASC on a number of occasions, the cost usually is a lot less than um, uh, what you were thinking, Josh. Well, uh, that's because what it was last time, just so you know. Yeah, but I think they were more involved. Uh, what I'm getting at is that they, uh, they're willing to work with school committees and it would be more in a uh, guidance capacity, if you will, so the cost would be reduced. But one of the things that uh, I would suggest you keep in mind, for example, when brochures are done by MASC or NESDAQ or some of the other uh, search firms, it gets pretty costly. Uh, you may have some nice glossies and uh, certainly labor costs, et cetera. We can do that. Um, it, it may not be fancy dancy, but it'll get the message across. This day and age, uh, it's very easy to get uh, information out on the uh, um, technology websites, and we can handle that. We don't have to have MASC do that. I don't know if they still advertise in Education Week where you, um, in the old days, uh, used to get a, a, a pretty good run for your money on it, but <clears throat> not so sure that's necessary this day and age because most people that are in the market can sit, simply hit 
positions throughout the country by a uh, link. Okay, and then uh, some of the additional stuff, if you're going to be sending out information uh, to recruit, uh, we can handle that in terms of our mailing rather than passing it on. So there are ways of uh, economizing. And uh, last but not least, with respect to the issue of uh, MASC, basically they would be developing um, a candidate pool, if you will. They're not uh, reviewing, screening, interviewing uh, per se. Uh, they can do a paper review, for example, someone that, that wouldn't meet your criteria and may not have uh, the superintendent uh, certificate, uh, may not be anywhere near attaining the superintendent certificate, or may not be anywhere near being able to get a waiver from the Department of Education. They can sort through that rather quickly. Um, and then, you know, as I say, have a pool that then the committee goes through and does the official screening. So there are a number of ways that you can reduce the cost, but you would have their expertise every step along the way to guide you. Thank you, Dr. Melby. Any other comments? If not, then the chair would entertain a motion. I made a motion, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Yeah, and I second. Uh, no further comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Uh, the next item is hearing for visitors. Is there anyone in that would like to be heard? Okay. Oh. Yes. <coughs> Mary uh, Brainy. Good evening. I would, uh, Mary Brainy. <laughs> Um, Pine Acres Road, also Spencer Finance Committee, and I'd just like to make a couple comments about the teachers, um, retired teachers, retirement, um, retired teachers' health insurance. Um, no question needed to be addressed when we have a million dollars of our $24 million budget going to only to fewer than 100 people. Um, absolutely has to be put on the table major concerns that are now, I think, finally being addressed, thanks to the um, patients of the folks who have been doing the, the, I just spoke with the lady from Blue Cross and, and a couple people like that. But the fact that the information was not provided in a clear and timely manner, um, that very first hearing, all the things that I've learned today, I believe could have been presented at that time saved a lot of aggravation, um, comparison about what GIC offered and so on. All that being said, I would still like to know what is the projected savings to the district and what are you proposing to do with the money that is being saved? I know on the town side when we went for the meals tax, the selectmen chose to take that off the amount of the um, request for an override. I'm just wondering um, what the projected savings are and what your plans are for any savings that you realize. The answer is the same tonight as it has been previously. Uh, we don't know what the projected savings are at this point until everybody gets moved into the plans that they're going in and the insurance company calculates for us and we're probably, how far down the track you think, uh, Dr. Melba before. Yeah. I believe today was the last day, but we had a glitch on the first day um, that I would expect that some people didn't get the information and some people did not come to the sessions that we're going to have to reach out to them. The, the letter really? said that it was due by May 15th. Right. So I'm still waiting on a lot of forms well, back. By May 15th was the yeah. deadline. Okay. Deadline. So not everyone came to the meetings. They could still mail them in up until then. So and I'm, we're probably going to have to track a lot of people down because we're missing a lot. So we could be still months away, and uh, we have not given any thought. We're not going to spend money that we don't have. Uh, we'll wait and see uh, what the savings are, and then we'll the board will make decisions as to how that money's going to be spent. So you didn't do any scenarios or projections to see if there was actually going to be any savings at all then? Well, we know that there, we are hoping that there will be some savings at some point uh, throughout the process. But uh, again, until people sign up and go into the plans that they have to choose, it's uh, we're not going to make this a guessing game and, and count that uh, on X amount of dollars and have it be half of that. We're going to wait to see till we have the numbers uh, 
and then we'll go forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just, um, not sure, I just wonder if somebody coming to you with a projection of, well, you know, and not having done any estimates of, say, at the very least, at the very most, and something in the middle, um, you know, is, is that really something that you would accept if it was another group coming to you asking for um, these kinds of, uh, this, this kind of information? I just really find it hard to believe that you didn't do any bracketing of, of estimates as typically we do with a lot of financial things, making it very clear that these are estimates, but at least giving ballparks. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else? Yes. Hi. I know it was not on the agenda tonight, but me and Mr. Bayshant worked really hard on it, so I would like to say what we have to say. Go ahead. Thank you. So, I'm Alicia Fagarski, freshman at Prouty. On May 2nd and 3rd and 4th, the musical All Shook Up was performed at David Prouty and was a success. A big thank you goes out to Mrs. Becky Boussier, Mrs. Cam Rabino, Mr. John Wage, Mr. Paul Mos Mosinski, and Mr. Aaron Keyes, <laughs> along with all the student and parent volunteers involved for a fantastic weekend of performances. On Thursday, May 8th, the student council is sponsoring a blood drive during the school day in the high school gymnasium. The junior prom is being held on Friday, May 9th. On May Monday, May 12th, the student council will be hosting the annual senior citizen social beginning, beginning at 5 p.m. Also, the student council will be hosting the annual Mr. and Mrs. Panther contest in the high school auditorium from 7 to 9 p.m. All sophomores will be taking the Math MCAS on Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, May 13th and 14th. The Distinguished Alumni Inauguration will be held at 10 a.m. on Wednesday, May 14th. Also, Mrs. Higgins will be hosting the annual DPHS Art Show in the main lobby from 5 to 6. And Mrs. Boussier and Mr. Wage will be hosting the annual Spring Concert, which involves the chorus and band students. Beginning at 7 p.m., the cost of tickets are $5. You should come see it. It's going to be pretty good. <laughs> Mrs. McLaughlin and her science students and um, an Envirothon team will be competing against schools statewide on Thursday, May 15th. And the senior dinner dance will be held that same evening. The senior class trip will be on Friday, May 16th. The annual DPH golf tournament will be held on Saturday, May 17th at the Leicester Country Club. And finally, the junior class will be hosting a hypnotist on Tuesday, May 20th in the high school auditorium beginning at 7 p.m. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that, uh, that you mentioned uh, the play. Uh, I came uh, to that play kind of grudgingly, but my wife made me come. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted Sunday dinner, so I came, and it was, it was <laughs> nothing short of fantastic. And uh, I was so happy that I did come when it was over, because uh, I really came away with a new appreciation for the commitment and the hard work that not just the students do, but uh, Becky and, and the other staff that worked with her and, and the band, they just did an absolute fabulous job. The place was packed. Uh, they sold hot dogs and pizza and all kinds of other things uh, to get some funds. But I was really impressed. And the fact that so many of them were freshmen, they told me that a ton of the staff that were in the play were freshmen and stuff. So that bodes well for what's going to be coming down the, the lane here in the next few years. So thank you for reminding me and mentioning that. Yeah. Okay, is there anyone else that would like to be heard? Okay, not seen, uh, did you have something? No, I would, if I could, uh, Mr. Chairman, and uh, for the uh, committee as well as for the communities, just to let you know um, uh, my role over the next several months and year, if it takes that long, that uh, with respect to your superintendent's search, uh, I'm hearing rumors that uh, the incumbent is, is already out of the district, moving out of the district. Uh, you know, that is, is not true. Uh, I expect to be here for as long as you want me. Yep. Um, I will be uh, committed and dedicated to my responsibilities as your superintendent. Should you wish 
uh, the wisdom of my years in the business and um, as a, a guiding uh, factor or advisory, I certainly will uh, provide that to you if asked. Uh, the incumbent superintendent does not interfere with the process, does not step in unless asked, and I certainly would be willing to do that, but I want people to rest assured that uh, uh, this is not a lame duck superintendency. Uh, if I've done seven of these, I believe um, this will be no different, that it's more important to me that as I move on from a district with a new superintendent come in, coming in, that I set the table for that person and pass the baton very smoothly without dropping it. Not to say that there won't be issues, because we have issues, but I want everyone to know that they have the full commitment of this person, because when I leave, I want to make sure that I've given that individual all the necessary information and the wherewithal to be successful. If they succeed, they will do it on their own, but I don't want anyone to fail and turn and say, well, you know, if, if uh, Ted Malvey had only done this and said yada yada, so I'm going to make sure that we tend to that. And I want the committee to, to be comfortable knowing that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, uh, looking out the window uh, one foot out the door. Uh, I, I have plenty to do. Uh, I was talking with some of my colleagues today, and and we were uh, kind of kibitzing a little bit about uh, some folks were heading out to retirement. But I said, you know, I, I get myself into these things and um, I have to kind of uh, look myself in the mirror when you're leaving the office on a Friday night when you should be starting your weekend. And in my case, uh, going to see uh, some of my 10 grandchildren and it may be a 7.30, 8 o'clock when I'm leaving the office and I say, you know, what's with this picture? I'm an interim superintendent. Everything should happen smoothly, but I hope you will rest assured that uh, you'll get that same type of commitment, whether it's the last day or the first day when I came into the district. And if it doesn't work, I'd be more than happy to stay a, a tad longer, as they say, to make sure that you do end up with the candidate that you're going to be successful with. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Malvey. Uh, all right, no further comments by board would entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, I just want to make a motion to adjourn. Uh, hockey games on tonight. If you follow a hockey game after Saturday's game, it was a neck and neck, and uh, I'd like to be home and watch it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, motion. Second. Made seconded by Mr. Cludio. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Thank you. Thank you.